What is rolling, y'all? This is Coaster Dolphin here, and today we'll be going in depth on the all new Batman Gotham City Escape Coaster at Porque Warner Madrid. This coaster opened up to rush on May 13th, 2023. It has a length of 3,313 feet, an exhilarating top speed of 64.6 miles per hour, making it the fastest coaster in the park. I am so sorry, Superman. Four inversions and a duration of a minute and 51 seconds. Did Parque War in Madrid just build a coaster that's worthy of the Elite status? We're going to dive on in and see if Batman's worthy of that status or if Joker had too much of a say in the design process. Batman Gotham Cityscape is located smack dab in the center of the park, making it a true centerpiece for all the themed lands that surround it. As you go through the front entrance and walk down Main Street, the first thing that you see is some intimate goodness in the form of an exhilarating top hat in front of a ginormous SNS shot tower. This ride is also intimidating to look at since the jet black track surrounds you from almost every angle. There's absolutely no escape from this one. You're stuck in Gotham City. You can visually see riders getting thrown out of their seats left and right with every element of this ride. The fear of riders is clearly shown as they're about to be absolutely yeeted on that first drop and zero-g stall. Speaking of theming, this ride excels in this department. You can see rock work, buildings, evil villains that Batman always seems to run into, and the excellently themed Batmobile train zooming all around you. I like to see him drive 80 and a 55 on the Jersey Turnpike. Without further ado, let's jump into Bruce Wayne's mansion and take a tour of the inside queue since you're about to leave Madrid and enter Gotham City once you step inside. You enter inside the Bruce Wayne Mansion's living room, which has TV screens of CJ Batman and Joker speaking to you in Spanish with English subtitles, which made my American self happy since I understood what was going on and a fireplace of green laughing gas coming out of it. There is a hidden door or bookshelf that opens up, which makes you think you're entering Hogwarts. Plus, since this isn't Universal Orlando and there are no wizards around, all you get is a detailed brick passes with red swirling lights because of the imminent danger from Joker. For some reason, it made me really want Raising Canes. The passage takes you directly to Batman's lair, which actually feels like like a real lair due to the ton of rock work and dark mood lighting. And it's huge! You can even see the central computer over there which controls Joker from showing up out of nowhere. As you keep walking, the rock work turns into a detailed subway station which in my opinion is the best part because it's too late to turn around since you're just about to be next on the ride. As you go under the arc, the intimidating Batmobile shows up right in front of you and you're about to go for a ride. The Batmobile departs the station and you get a verbal warning from Batman about Joker. There were no subtitles on the screen so I cannot confirm what Batman said. The train enters a pre-show scene where Joker is right above you and it's his face shooting you with his laughing gun. Thankfully, the Batmobile works and you launch out. You pop out into a step up that provides some good airtime directly into a corkscrew that crawls throughout. It provides hang time so strong that you wonder if the ride's gonna roll back on the first element. You then realize the gas pedal's on the right and reverse down into the second launch that swords you into that gigantic top hat. With strong positives at the bottom, lots of whip from the 180 degree turnaround, and strong ejector airtime at the top that made me shout, Woo! at the top of the hill. This feels very similar to the one-eyed door on Velocicoaster. The train ends up hitting a trim brake as you traverse down, which didn't bother me since it adds suspense and gave me a second to process that amazing ejector going up. The drop does provide some strong floaters since it is a beyond vertical drop and rushes immediately into the sustained ejector hill. This hill is basically one of Maverick's hill but on steroids. I was not expecting such strong ejector for such a sustained time. The Batmobile then turns into a wonky dive loop that provides a unique sensation of laterals and airtime. It's just as fun as a Velocicoaster's dive loop. There is a strong pop of ejector right under this bridge that I was not expecting because I went to this ride blind. You then enter a cheetah hunt style twisty hill and then a corkscrew that's taken a lot faster than the first one. A wave turn shows up out of nowhere that looks slow off ride but yanks you out of your seat. This may be the most underrated element of the ride. A third launch sends you up a pair of S curves into the star element, the Zero G stall. This puts the stall correctly into the name of the element since it takes forever to go through and you're hanging upside down for several seconds. This was redesigned from the original stall to make it more extreme, which I'm very happy they did since this is the most insane stall I've ever experienced. The train enters Joker's Lair, entering a spike to slow down the train and then a turntable to turn the train into the station, where you then have time to fully process the ride. This ride is absolutely incredible with a great variety of elements, amazing forces, and amazing theming. 
it's incredibly smooth with it being brand new and the next gen intimate restraints add on to the feeling of airtime and hang time. The contrast between Positive G, strong ejector airtime floater, and some of the strongest hang time I've ever experienced help make the ride balance with each force. Each element is perfectly placed next to one another and helps balance out the ride. The hang time also doesn't kill off the pacing of this ride since it takes place both at the very beginning and the very end of the ride. The trim brake on the top only anticipates the rapid fire pacing in the second half of the ride. Intamin absolutely nailed out of the park with this edition. The best comparison that I can give this ride is that it is essentially the Veloc coaster of Europe. It's highly addictive and I enjoyed every single second of this coaster. I cannot wait to return back to get more rides on this. I really hope that Intamin builds more rides like this in the future since I absolutely fell in love with it. I'm putting this ride in the S tier category because of how perfective it is. It definitely put Parquet Warner Madrid up there on the map as a must visit park. Out of 636 coasters I've ridden so far, it currently ranks as the 5th best overall coaster I have ridden. If Parque Warren Madrid your home park, consider yourself absolutely blessed to have a coaster this amazing so close to you. If you enjoyed this video, go ahead and leave a like, comment down below, and go ahead and leave a subscription and turn on those post notifications so you can be the first to find out what my new videos are. And as always, we'll go ahead and see you out on the next video.